Hi, and welcome to Variant Edition, your first weekly video podcast about comics and comic culture. I'm Mike. And I'm Nick. And what we got for you this week is we've got the, the stereotypical I've Got Reviews. I'm taking a look at a Marvel Holiday Special and Stanley meets uh, Silver Surfer. Ah, yes, the epic battle between the Silver Surfboard and the Silver Hair. So good. And, uh, yeah, I have Zombie Number 3, which was a very good read. And uh, Kevin has a little word he would like to say to our audience members. And the Swiss Techs have our Statue and Toy Review. As usual. And another thing we have for this episode... Snacks! Lots of snacks, because snacks are good and delicious. But why do we have these snacks, Nick? We have these snacks, these delicious, salty snacks, because we have a lot of footage to be reviewing from our art gallery show that we were at. And we're kind of sitting here compiling things, making things look nice for you, the viewer. Snacks help us with that. So uh, we're going to kick it off with some footage of Kevin and I at the gallery show. Okay, so Nick, Mike, and I were invited today to uh, Long Branch, New Jersey, to the Shore Institute of Contemporary Art for the American Comics Creators Gallery Showing. Yeah, and uh, it's been a pretty nice turnout. There's very nice turnout. A lot of very interesting art. Oh, yes. We'll be talking to the curators in a little bit, but you see it's sort of celebrating the uniquely American art form that is comic books. Yeah. It's just uh, it's it's a nice display of how comics aren't just what people think they are. There, there's so much more to it. There's so many different aspects that they cover besides just superheroes or children's topics. I mean, we've got everything from you know a newspaper strip comic, Dondi, to Spider-Man, yep. Ghost Rider, King yeah, Kong. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everything that you know. Even I found out today that Bernie Wrightson did the art for the Amazing Frankenstein graphic novel that I love so much. There's a, a very diverse group of art on the walls here. So we'll be back joining back in a few moments with the curators so they can tell us a little bit about the exhibit. Yeah, and uh, hopefully while we're here we'll be able to get some interviews and get a few words in with some of the creators who have things on display here. Yeah, so we're going to kick it back to the uh, to the studio. Yes. And then we'll be back in a few moments uh, with some more from here from the uh, American Comics Creators Show. Hi, I'm Nick and this is the news for the week of Wednesday, December 6th. Wizard Entertainment announced last week that they had fired senior vice president and editor-in-chief Pat McCullen. McCullen was one of the original Wizard staff members of the magazine. Wizard has been catching quite a bit of flack lately, with inflated convention numbers, followed by some firings and a new convention schedule, a drop in ad revenue, and rapidly falling sales, now followed by an editorial shakeup. Wizard recently revamped the magazine to be more pop culture friendly. Some in the industry see no surprise at the editorial change. Wizard is currently accepting resumes for the position. Fanboys, start your engines! According to The Hollywood Reporter, DC's Vertigo comic Preacher will be adapted by HBO as a series. Preacher is about a down-and-out Texas preacher who is possessed by a supernatural entity. With his new power, the preacher sets out on a journey across the U.S. to find God, accompanied by an old girlfriend and a hard-drinking Irish vampire. With any luck, since it's going to be on HBO, Ennis fans won't be disappointed. And for those of you who aren't Ennis fans, it's got a drinking Irish vampire in it. And in summer 07 blockbuster news, USA Today premiered the Fantastic Car. Does it fantastic suck? We'll see in a second, Mike. From next summer's Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Hmm. It says it's designed by Tim Flattery, who designed the Batmobile in Batman Begins. Kind of gold, isn't it? While accounts have put a Watchmen movie as an on-again, off-again type proposition, it seems as if the latest incarnation is moving forward. Adam Hughes has confirmed to Newsarama that he is working with the director, Zack Snyder, on the upcoming adaptation. Hughes is tasked with costume design, adapting the looks of all the characters from the book to the big screen. Now remember, sports racers, what works in the book might not work on a 30-foot screen. And how better to translate that than a comic book artist? We're not saying that this movie has a chance of being good yet, but maybe it's got a chance. It seems like some Michael Turner and Red Sonia fans may be turning into statue fans. In addition to an upcoming mini bust and a statue based on Adam Hughes' cover, Dynamite Entertainment will be releasing a statue based on Turner's cover to issue number one. The Red Sonia statue should ship in May for $295 and measure 13 inches tall. Potential statue review. If you know where to look, there are plenty of online comics out there. And if you're willing to pay for them, there are a couple of services that have launched this year, including Wowio, Slave Labor Graphics, and an announced but yet to be launched Top Cow Initiative. Add Pollbox Online to that list. 
operated by Josh Blaylock, who also runs DDP and publishes G.I. Joe, and the upcoming Chucky series, the new service will enable non-cheapskate fans to buy comics for the iTunes industry standard of 99 cents. DDP has put up a large portion of their catalog, minus G.I. Joe, and has been joined by IDW. So what do you get for 99 cents? A PDF or CBR file containing a single issue. No DRM. No fancy flash. Expect new comics every Wednesday, just like the paper kind. That's it for the news this week, but before I go, one last thing. Marvel last week announced that Civil War number 6 would be delayed from December 20th, to the new date of January 3rd. According to Marvel Editor-in-Chief Joe Quesada, the change comes as a safety measure as artist Steve McNiven has just come down with a bad case of strep throat. The new schedule is meant as a buffer to ensure a timely delivery. We're joined by Kevin, who has a few words to share on the subject. Kevin? Okay, I'm gonna put on my retailer hat for a second. One of the many roles that I play in the day in the life of Kevin is managing a comic book store. I was going to go on about how the last delay for Civil War number six was actually bad for business and how the delay for number five actually hurt sales. But you know what? I'm not going to. Instead, I'm actually going to recommend some comics that you can go get today and will probably enjoy more than Civil War. These are books that I will stand behind, and if you know what's good for you, you're going to go pick up. They've got the Kevin stamp of approval. First is a comic that I've mentioned on the show a few times, Wicked West 2. I did review a few episodes back. Check it out. Basically, it picks up, not exactly where the last book left off, but there's the further adventures of our hero, Cotton, who, due to a curse, mysterious curse that we're starting to learn about in the second book, um, he sort of, well, let's just say that bad, freaky things are attracted to him like flies. Want something a little more superhero-y? Then check out Invincible. It's by that zombie guy, Robert Kirkman. Imagine a cross between early Spider-Man and Superman. It's witty, unpredictable, and fun. Trust me, it's cool. There are a few trades out there, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. Of course, if you watch the show, you'll already know what we think is good. But I'm going to reiterate. DMZ, Powers, Elephant Men, Convention Confessional, Mouse Guard, The Killer, the list goes on. There are a lot of good books out there off the beaten track. Check them out. So instead of thinking that this is a loss and you're going to have to wait for something good, go out and check some of these out. Don't let Marvel's schedule put a crimp on your comics enjoyment. There are a lot of cool books out there. You just got to go get them. So what's up next? Well, up next is the Swiss Stacks with the Toy and Statue Review. But first, it's back to the American Comics Creators Exhibit. Kevin again, back at the uh, Shore Institute of Contemporary Art at the American Comics creators show and this time I'm joined with the curators we have Ian Dorian and James Santangelo so tell us what this show is why this show is this show was um, is about American comics creators we feel that we really wanted a forum for the American comics creators we wanted them to have an opportunity to show the work to the general public and reach some of the audiences that maybe are not too familiar with comics and uh, to learn more about the the in-depth work that they do the medium uh, entertainment medium you started with radio you see people uh, listening to radio and then when it moved to television there were a lot of people that were kind of resistant to the new media then uh, you had movies and people were kind of resistant you know no, you want to listen to the radio or no you want to watch television well the one media which people never really embraced was comic books and it just seems that with this show, we're getting a glimpse of some of the various, the various issues that comic books represent. And it covers all things from uh, what it means to be an American, to what it means to be a hero, to, you know, various, every facet of life is embraced by comic books. We have one book that's done by uh, Rags Morales, uh, based on a Jeff Johns story for uh, the Justice Society of America, which deals with uh, war, uh, brutal war. Uh, we have Sam Glansman uh, story, which is written and drawn by Sam Glansman about his real adventures uh, and experiences during World War II. So, uh, not exactly funny. Yeah. Might, might I make a comment? Um, like jazz, comics are a truly American art form. 
and which is true. And actually, we've been getting that from most of the people that we've been speaking to, that it's a unique art form. It's something that they've been drawn to. What drew you to? I mean. Is, if, is if, there if a people aren't sure, well, no, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry about that. But if, if people don't know, I mean, you're you're an artist in your own right. Uh, thank um, you. What drew you to wanting to spread the word, other than I mean, you, you sort of said that, but again, well, I'll tell you exactly what it was. Um, when I was a boy, a very young boy, my twin brother Guy and I, um, we went to the. We used to go out with my mother on the weekends, and we used to walk around the city. We grew up in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and. Um, to keep us busy with something to read while we were walking through the city, um, she bought us comic books. And uh, I remember staying outside of the supermarket and my brother and I were really involved in what we had picked up. The colors were bright and everything. And it was, um, it was Power Man and Iron Fist, guest starring the X-Men, drawn by Trevor Von Eden. And Guy and I opened this book up. We were so fascinated. It was our first comic book and we said, we, as soon as we were done, we, we, when we got home, we said to our mother, do, we, do you have a box? And she said, sure, what do you need it for? So she gave us a box and we said, we're going to fill this box with comics. And uh, after that, we started drawing comics every day outside on the porch or in the house. After school, we do our homework and then draw until we fell asleep. And um, we were just fascinated, fascinated with the dreams and the hopes and fascinated with the ambitions of, of artists. We come from a big family. Um, and it was really great too as I got older to find that a lot of the creators were Jews because I actually didn't know that uh, there were so many heroes for me to admire that were coming from a similar background as me. So it was really inspirational to say to me, I, I can do this too, you know, and I can share my stories, my family stories, my life stories, but through characters. And now come full circle and spread that. And share the work of your heroes. That's right. With everyone else. That's right. Well, we've been walking around the show. We're going to see a little more of the show. And um, we, we've talked to some creators. We're going to talk to some more. I have to say, very impressive show. Thank gentlemen. you. Thank you. Thank very you impressive. Much. Thank you. Hello there. Hi. How you doing? We're back here with varying editions for this week's Toy and Statue Reviewer. Although we got no statues. No. But we got nice things. Well, we'll nice get to selection. that. We'll get to that nice in a moment. Selection. Whether we do or don't have a statue this week. The, with the, the, mm, I won't say no more on him. Uh-oh. All right. But what we got, which is real nice, is the soda toys. The monsters are actually their nightmares of Lovecraft. You got a Cthulhu from Call of Cthulhu. You got a... Who ghoul. Was he? The He's ghoul. a ghoul. And, and that's from Pikmin's model, yes. that story. Dagon. Yeah. And, from Dagon. And Dagon from the story Dagon. They're nice. They may not be painted as nice as they yeah. were when you could order them. But, but they're, they're very nice. Yeah, they're sculpted really nice. Lots of nice detail. Um, You, you know, I don't know. The Dagon is by far the nicest. Yeah. He, the sculpture on him is awesome. He's so fleshy looking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, the paint job is so-so, but with a little bit of touch-up paint and such. He's got nice warts. He could be wonderful. And he's pretty poseable, too. You've got ball-jointed arms on him, so Can't even though ball joints. M much of them doesn't move, the tentacles don't move, the four ball-jointed arms are articulated, the head is articulated at the neck. <laughs> he got a nice six eyes on him, a beautiful yeah, six, six eyes. eyes. But uh, very nice. He's got a tentacle on a tentacle. Yes. I like it. Yes. Definitely nice. The ghoul... The ghoul is so-so. The ghoul's got an awesome base. It's just nothing but little people. Like body bodies parts and, and bodies. And skulls. In and scale with the body he's holding. And there's some goo. Yeah, there's goo. There's goo. Guts and Lots such. Goo. And um, a thing going into this guy's gullet. Yes, That's yes. Nice. Yeah, you got you to have the gullets... Uh, thing in or er. guy missing an arm but yeah. i don't know if that's intentional or not no yeah i don't know looks like there's a little pinhole might have had originally planned an arm on that chap he don't got it that's okay I it's like kind of hidden by the hoof yeah I the like ghoul has hoofs. a nice hoof good quality of a hoof, hoof. the paw i gotta be into the big tooth in the lower jaw thing or you might not like that guy too much because he's got that going in spades but he holds this little guy nice at first when we opened him up we weren't yeah. sure how much we liked him he holds the guy he's nice then you got the Cthulhu. Now I'm a huge Cthulhu fan. Um, the only negative thing I could say about him 
is well his paint i said that already but his pose he's so kind of squashed down on himself that you don't see the nice chest detail you don't see the nice undercarriage yeah, yeah. detail nice mouth you said he had yeah he's got a real nice like leech mouth up underneath his tentacles um ball jointed wings ball jointed shoulders and the uh, the rasta tentacles that he's got around the top of his head are those rubber with the wire That's inside nice. so They're you nice can pose them he's got a nice spine too on his back yeah they're really nice. What are, what are these guys run at, Kev? What are they, like 19 20 bucks each or $25 each somewhere? 15 to 20 Not bad. They're nice. If you're into the characters, I mean, even if you're just in a crazy fish monster, the Dagon is like a yeah. must-have. He, he's great. Uh, I, these The three that are open to mine, because I'm a, a Lovecraft nut, and they, they're pretty they're nice. Cool. You know, they're very cool. I'll get, my, I'll get any Cthulhu I could get my hands on. Then we got this other character here. This character here. here, for those of you guys who um, are not Lovecraft fans and might complain that we didn't do a comic-related yes. statue-type thingy, we've got Spider-Man. He's actually a really nicely sculpted Spider-Man. And but, he's got uh, an extra added bonus. Can I spin him? He's a bank. Look at that. He's a bank. You got a nice little slot, put a quarter in. He's a bank. He's a bank. He's, he's a, a vinyl bank. bank. But he sculpted awesome. He's got great musculature. He's, he's like a $10 thing, a bank for kids. But he's a really nice, bank. big Spider-Man bust. He's vinyl. He's painted pretty yeah, decent. He's got, he's got some, some nice, nice shadows and shading shade. on him and stuff. He's got webs under his armpits. Yeah. They're a little thick, but yeah. again, uh, they got to be for coins to get in there, I guess. You don't want a bank no. to only hold three coins because then it ain't very damn functional, no, is it? No, it wouldn't be a good bank after that. Um, but again, pretty cool. I mean... And they're so doing nice a couple different make, kinds, right? Yeah, I think Kev was saying that they're doing a black, uh, the symbiote suit uh, Spider-Man, which we think is probably, you know, same pose, yeah. just painted black. Yeah. Um, there might have been mention of a Wolverine, but the Spider-Man is really nice. Awesome. I mean, if you're a Spider-Man fan and you're maybe not on the budget to be getting the 50 60 70 $800 Spider-Man pieces, or you got a kid, yeah, got a kid or a child, a I'm kid, sorry, child, who is uh, in the Spider-Man who may be into the statue and bust thing a little bit, but you don't dare buy him one because yeah. you know it'll get destroyed. It's nice and plastic. He can, yeah, he ain't you know, getting hurt. No. He can, he's, he's, you know, he's vinyl. You could drop him kick around. him and, yeah, and he'd be fine. he'll survive it. He'll come out but he's like 10 a bucks. Can't 10 bucks. Wrong. You can start seeing them and finding them at your local comic book stores. They should be carrying them. Um, who he's made by? Yeah. Monogram. Yeah, it says monogram. monogram, so that may be the model model company monogram. I don't know. But he's nice. You check him out if you see him, if you're a Spider-Man fan or a he's Bust cool. fan. But So I guess that's about it yeah. for this week. Nothing thrilling. But, but very nice. nice. Very nice. You know? Very All nice. right. Sometimes we don't, you, know, you don't get the statue route. You just get the toy route, and there you go. Yeah. And no Bowens. No, yeah, and yeah, no for all the, all the people who say we show too many Bowens, no Bowens <laughs> no this Bowens week, this week. unfortunately. We are Bowen-free this week on the statue and model front. Yeah, unfortunately. It's a shame, I know. But anyway, have a good one, everybody. Take and, care. And uh, we'll see you soon. So this week I took a look at the Marvel Holiday Special. This is a big Christmas comic. This is uh, pretty pointless, is what it is. Uh, it's a fun read. You can read it for... You know, I think it took me all of like two minutes to get through everything. There's not a lot of dialogue in here. It's it's kind of silly. Uh, your your basic story is centered around um, an AIM agent who brings her friend to the holiday Christmas party where there's a green alert. Green alert, of course, being there's a Hulk that's possibly going to break out shortly. Anyway, things go awry. You got a lot of the old AIM characters running around, causing havoc, people drinking. It's it's all around. It's a good party until Hulk gets out, and then he, you know, cleverly the date of this AIM agent he uses mistletoe to uh, you know get that last minute kiss in there before the Hulk smashes him. Uh, there's some paper cutout ornaments. Do you need them? No, uh, they could have used something else from. There's some. Some photos in the back, you want to look through that, but really, it's just, you know, it's just a holiday thing. You pick it up, you give it to a kid, it's fine. So we're here at the American Comics Creators Gallery showing, and we're just going to do segments on each of our favorite pieces here. Now, mine was somewhat of a surprise. I I've known about this graphic novel for quite some time, about like 2002, I've known about it, and uh, had no idea that it was Bernie Wrightson who did the art for it, but they have a Bernie Wrightson art piece here, from his adaptation of Frankenstein, which is one of the most amazing things. The original Mary Shelley version of Frankenstein is just, it, it's such an incredible story. And the thing that I love about his adaptation of it is, it's 
it's exactly how I pictured it. Even just like the style of his artwork for it goes so well with the time period that the story takes place in. It, it's spot on to how you would picture these things to actually be. I mean, his design for the for the creature isn't you know that Boris Karloff flat top head. Granted, he looks like you know a big zombie, but he's made out of dead body parts. But he, he depicts such a nice feel and such a great emotion from this character. And it really shows you that Frankenstein was the first story that showed you that, you know, not all monsters are purely evil. This was just a creature thrown into this chaotic and hellish world against his will and just trying to survive. And I honestly feel that Bernie Wrightson, especially with this piece right here, captures that nice feel for the character of the creature. To know, I mean, you look at that face. Granted, he's made out of corpses. But there's a lot of stuff going on in there. It's it's a very well done version of how you, how I feel Frankenstein should be, and I feel it's a great companion to the original story. So here we are doing our favorite segment, and I walked in. This is one of the first things I saw, and this is this is Ghost Rider for me. This has been Ghost Rider for me forever. This isn't just because the movie's coming out. No, I date farther back. So this is one of my favorite Ghost Riders. This is uh, probably actually my favorite Ghost Rider done by Mark Texier, and this is what Ghost Rider should be. So here at the exhibit, we're doing a, yep. a favorite selection. Yeah, and uh, for those who aren't here, they'd so definitely be appreciating this. Yes, so. they would uh, definitely be appreciating this. We're standing in front of uh, three crumb drawings. Yes, we have a very nice collection here of an actual full complete R. Crumb story, which is great to have this you know displayed here. and. Absolutely, and so. the Swiss stacks who aren't with us today would really love to see yeah. this. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to end up heading down here as soon as they can now. Just to check out some Crumb, and there are a few more just drawings that Crumb has done. They actually right. have a full, complete story yeah, this done is by Crumb. This is from some comic that he's done somewhere along the line. And so. uh, I like his stuff. They like his stuff a lot more. And uh, yeah. I, yeah, so uh, if they were here, they'd like it, but since they're not, they're just missing out. Yep. Zombie issue number three finally out and uh, I've been enjoying the first one and the second one Issue number three really blew me away. I mean Mike Rach. I I've met the guy I talked to him online through emails tell him how I like his book He really did a bang-up job for number three the 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 way that they were where, where they're taking the story and what they did with the story in this one issue alone is Awesome, so let's go into that issue number two ends where you find out that Angie is Jip's girlfriend, the guy with the ironic name, who's the bank robber in our story, and uh, that kind of screws everything up, because then you realize, hey, she was there to meet up with them, and once again, somebody else thrown into this ridiculous situation that was kind of placed there before. Good writing. So, find that out, and that kind of screws everybody over. And uh, she's kind of watching over, well, not really watching over Buddy, but second in command due to the fact that she's that dude's girlfriend. So, they talk to the doctor because Jip is bitten by one of the zombies and he wants to know, you know, what's going to happen to him. The doctor explains to him his connections with the zombies. He worked for the government to make some serum to take soldiers out of, like, severe trauma. How it turns you into a mindless brain muncher, I don't know, but it makes you. And for some reason, he doesn't even know if Jip is going to become a zombie or go crazy due to his bites, because apparently the serum that he concocted and made wasn't even finished, and there's still so many things that he doesn't know about it. So honestly, if you get bit by these zombies, you might not even become a zombie. You might become something else. Who knows? The doctor don't. So anyway, they realize that, you know, they're really screwed where they are. There's too many zombies coming in. They need to get out of this area. And they devise a plan to go out and get, who was it? It was Bristol's van. No. Bristol had the truck whose keys were in another zombie's face, but Jip needs to get his keys to his van so that they can book out of this place because they're being infested by zombies. So they devise a plan where they're going to send Simon on a run out the back door to an old water tower to go up there, make a lot of noise, distract zombies, while they go get the van and come back for him. Simon doesn't trust him, so he demands collateral, collateral being the two bags of money. So it's Simon, two bags of money, Heading off to the water tower, who's he run into? His undead girlfriend from the bank. Bites him in the arm. Doesn't mean the end for Simon. Don't really know what's gonna happen. Makes his way to the water tower. Zombies everywhere. So the Stan Lee meets whoever series has been going on for a while. Uh, this one is the newest one, Stan Lee meets Silver Surfer. And uh, what basically happens is Stan Lee, in the first story here, Stan Lee is in his little office at home. He's 
typing up something which will probably never be published because he doesn't write anymore. But whatever, I digress. He gets teleported above Galactus's, into Galactus's ship and uh, is basically told, you know, you gotta, talk, gotta go talk to the surfer. I'm really dumbing this down. It's a lot more complicated and, w and way more poetic in the, in the comic book, but I'm just gonna dumb it down. Uh, look, you gotta go talk to the Silver Surfer because I, Galactus, can't do it. What are you talking about? You can easily do it. No, really, I can't do it. I'm, I'm an all-knowing being. You gotta just go out there and talk to him for me. Oh, zap, there you go. Oh, I'm on a surfboard. And it's the Silver Surfer. I can't understand what you're saying. Okay, send me back to Galactus. Uh, yeah, I don't get him either. Yeah, rewrite him. Okay, I'm gonna do that. That's basically the first story in a nutshell right there. Really dumbed down. It's my worst probably review ever, but that's okay. Um, a couple other small stories. You got a boy who's drawing his first comic book ever, and Stanley tells him that it's, you know, 50% imagination and 90% perspiration, which makes 140%, and he's never been good at math. And he makes the fantastic car appear. Anyway... He flies around, there's some other small stories going on. It's, you know, your classic Stanley meets whoever uh, series, and this is just a fun book to read. It, it takes, I don't know, all of 10 minutes, 5 minutes to get through. It's, it's, it's just a fun read. I say pick it up, they've been going well. Why not pick this one up too? So that's the show for this week, and what a great show it was. Yeah, it was, it was a good show, as we at Varian Edition like to say around here. An awesome an show. Awesome show. Yes, and a special thanks out to Ian Dorian, who set us up with doing the uh, media room for... Yes, with the, with the, with the comics art uh, gallery show. What was it? The uh, American Comics Creators Gallery Show, which was very well done, both by Ian Dorian and James Santangelo. Both very big helps for us. We were well received, and we really do appreciate it, guys. Thanks. So, yeah, and uh, don't forget, check us out on variantedition.com. You can also find out if you are a New Jerseyan, as we here are, you can go to our website and check out times and locations of this gallery show. It's definitely something worth checking out. We advise it, and we also advise for you to check out our YouTube. Our YouTube. Our iTunes. Our iTunes, and you can check us out and send, uh, not check us out, but you can send us email, mikeofvariantedition.com, nickofvariantedition.com, kevinofvariantedition.com, statuesofvariantedition.com if you got a question for Mr. Swistack, and we're also on MySpace. Don't try to uh, strut your stuff around for us, just, you know, we'll add you to the friends list. Yeah, it's all right. All right, so yeah, that's the show. Hope you enjoyed the show and the snacks, mostly the snacks. Have a great time. Catch you next week. 20% more. If you know where... Online comics... <laughs> <laughs> Just get that part.